Good morning, everybody. This is Stephen Pugh of the Home Bible College. It is um, February, uh, sorry, March the fourth, and we're in Deuteronomy chapter four. Moses recalls the works of God in which he had faithfully provided and blessed Israel. He warns Israel of the terrible consequences of spiritual adultery if they forsake the Lord to make and worship idols. Then he appoints the cities of refuge. And then he reiterates the commandments of the Lord regarding the Mosaic Covenant. He calls, um, he calls all Israel to remain faithful unto the Lord, uh, unto the Lord their God, and to never degenerate into idolatry. But first, we come to the recalling of the blessings of the Lord. How important it is to remind ourselves of former days. The children of Israel did not think of their past as something good and irrelevant. <clears throat> Rather, their past was a living, present reality. It gave significance to their present relationship with the Lord. They saw their present existence as a direct product of their history. He says, God, um, has God ever called a nation to serve him? Um, has he spoken to this people from the fire? Um, he did this because he loved their fathers and because he loved their fathers he called their seed after them he called them to drive out the nations in front of them and to give them the land as an inheritance so consider this O Israel that there is one God and therefore you are to keep his statutes and commandments if you do this then you will you you will then life will go well for you and with your children after you are gone and you will live long to give God all the glory. Next, Moses specifies the three cities of refuge on the eastern bank of Jordan. And then Moses reinstitutes the law as the of the Lord regarding Israel. He calls them the testimonies, the statutes and the judgment. The testimonies are the statements that are to be repeated which are true the affirmations the statutes are the ordinances of god godward <clears throat> and these are the things that are ordained of the lord regarding god now the judgments are the duties and the punishments enacted on behalf of god manward <clears throat> often these two concepts are united but they are actually distinct so Moses calls the people to hear the statutes and judgments of the Lord God of Israel. He says, listen to them, learn them and do them. He reminds them that the Lord made a covenant with Israel at Horeb. It was not made. It was not a covenant made with their fathers. He says, this came to you, Israel, directly from the Lord. Yet because you were afraid, I received it for you. There are some that say that this law was for all men and yet the preamble is very clear the lord says i am the lord thy god which brought thee out of the land of egypt from the house of bondage and then the lord states the ten commandments now we have the first commandment thou shalt have no other gods before me secondly thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image thirdly Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Fourth, keep the Sabbath day to sanctify it as the Lord thy God commanded thee. Five, honour thy father and thy mother as the Lord thy God hath commanded thee. Number six, thou shalt not kill or murder. Number seven, neither shalt thou commit adultery. Number eight, neither shalt thou steal. Number nine, that neither shalt thou bear false witness against thy neighbour. And number ten, neither shalt thou desire thy neighbour's wife, and so on. And then Moses went on to remind them that these were the words of the Lord. He reiterates a number of the details of this great event and reminds them of the fact that the Lord has spoken to them. What a great honour and responsibility was placed upon the children of Israel. <clears throat> now this is such an important and a crucial passage 
something that every Christian should become familiar with so that we might understand um, the children of Israel and who they are and how they lived before the Lord their God. Um, now <clears throat> it begins now therefore O Israel hearken unto the statutes and judgments have already talked about that which I will teach you for them to do them that you may live and go in and possess the land now the secret to longevity for the children of Israel the secret of a long life for the children of Israel was to keep the commandments of the Lord therefore those that were the elderly those that were the aged people in amongst the children of Israel were those who were dealt with with great respect because you see it was the wicked that died young it was the wicked that came under the judgments of God in premature judgment they had a short life and the Lord ended their life in judgment but those that were old are those that had those that had um, they had kept the commandments of the Lord. In verse 2 it says, You shall not add unto the word which I command you, neither shall you diminish aught of it, um, that you may keep the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you. Now there are Christians who say, of course nobody could ever keep the law, the Lord, and so nobody ever did. Nobody ever kept the law. Well, that patently is not true. Because if they hadn't have kept the law at all, then the whole nation would have perished very, very quickly. Um, the commandments were given to be kept. And by and large, the children of Israel did keep the commandments of the Lord. About that, there is no doubt. <coughs> um, now, it says, uh, verse 9, it says, Take heed unto thyself, keep thy soul diligently, lest thou forget the things which thine eyes have seen, and lest they depart from thy heart all the days of thy life, and teach them thy sons and thy sons' sons, especially the day that thou stoodest before the Lord thy God at Horeb, when the Lord said unto me, Gather me the people together, and I will make them hear my words, that they may learn to fear me, all the days that they may live upon the earth and that they may teach their children so this was um, this was a commandment from the Lord for the whole nation now I have a number of passwords today my next password is in verse 23 let me read it to you it says take heed unto yourselves lest you forget the commandment of Jehovah your God which he made with you and and make and make you a graven image or the likeness of anything which the Lord thy God hath forbidden thee for the Lord thy God is a consuming fire even a jealous God so this was a very strong severe practical warning to the children of Israel he says if you commit adultery sorry if you commit spiritual adultery that is you make idols then the Lord is a consuming fire and a jealous God <clears throat> and verse 26 I call heaven and earth to witness against you this day that you shall soon utterly perish from off the land whereunto you go over Jordan to possess it you shall not prolong your days upon it um, but shall utterly be destroyed and the Lord your God will scatter you among the nations and you will be left few in number among the heathen whether the Lord shall lead you and there ye shall serve gods the work of men's hands wood and stone which neither see nor hear nor eat nor smell so this is what's going to happen to the children of Israel if they forsake to keep the commandments of the Lord and of course we know that um, they did um, forsake the Lord and that the Lord did scatter them in the land uh, into other lands however take a look at verse 29 another password of mine now verse 29 and 20 29 and 30 um, and 31 they describe the ministry of Christ well John the Baptist first and then Christ and the ministry of the Apostles towards Israel let me read it to you but if from thence thou shalt seek the Lord thy God thou shalt find him 
if thou shalt seek him with all thy heart and with all thy soul. So really what the Lord Jesus uh, came to do was to tell the children of Israel to seek the Lord their God, to repent, to return unto the Lord their God. Because if they returned unto the Lord their God with all their heart and all their soul, then they would be restored into the old covenant. And take a look at verse 30. Now verse 30, I'm going to suggest, is looking far into the future. He says, And when thou art come into tribulation, now this is the time of the tribulation in future days, he says, And all these things are come upon thee, even in the latter days, if thou shalt turn unto the Lord thy God, and shall be obedient unto his voice, for the Lord thy God is merciful God, he will not forsake thee, neither destroy thee, nor forget the covenant of thy fathers, which he sware unto them. So in this little passage here, we have the, the warning from Moses that they are to be faithful to the Lord their God. If they're not faithful to the Lord their God, then the Lord will take them out of the land and they will be in captivity. However, if they return to the Lord their God with all their heart, then he will bless them. And in the latter days, that is in the day still yet to come, in the tribulation, and it mentions the tribulation, when thou art in tribulation, and all these things come upon thee, even in the latter days, if thou turn unto the Lord thy God and be obedient to his voice, right? he will not forsake thee, nor destroy thee nor forsake the covenant of thy fathers, which he swore unto thee. Now those who believe that Israel has ceased to exist would struggle with this passage. Because you see, this passage is talking about the latter days. And the latter days are those last few days of the tribulation period. These are the latter days. And uh, God will remember Israel in the latter days. He's not going to turn them into Christians. There'll be nobody will become a Christian in the tribulation because all Christians by that time will be in heaven. That'll be after the rapture. So there'll be no Christians left upon the earth. But if they, um, if they return to the Lord their God and seek after him, then he will not forget them and he will not destroy them. <clears throat> wow. Amazing, isn't it? And then we move on down through the passage. There's a very interesting part in verse, um, verse 39. Let me read it to you, 39 and 40. Know therefore this day, and consider in thine heart, that the Lord, he is God in heaven above, and upon earth belief, and there is none else. Thou shalt keep his statutes and his commandments, which I command thee this day, that it may go well with thee, and that thy children after thee, and that thou mayest prolong thy days upon the earth, which the Lord thy God hath given thee forever. So the keeping of the statutes and the commandments of the Lord for Israel was the secret to long life. If they kept the commandments of the Lord, which they did, then they would have a long life. The Lord would prolong their days upon the earth. Now, it's very interesting here. Now, when Adam sinned, the Lord said that in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Now, he didn't mean that he was going to die in the day that he ate it. That wasn't that was body at all. It meant that in the day that he took of the fruit that was forbidden, he would become mortal. And becoming mortal would mean that from that day when he took the fruit, he would be faced with his own death and he would live a long life yes but it would always be with the prospect of death in the end now with the commandments of the lord to moses the lord promised if you keep the commandments then you will have a longer life you will still have death in the end but your life will be prolonged upon the earth that is an amazing and amazing Thought. Take a look at verse 45. It talks about the testimonies, the statutes and the judgments. And we've talked about that already. <clears throat> and then we move on down. 
Um, now notice in verse 1 of chapter 5 where Moses reiterates the Ten Commandments, restates the law. He says, Hear, O Israel, the statutes and judgments which I speak into your ears this day, that you may learn them and keep and do them. These commandments were not given as just a token of what they couldn't do. No, they were given as an actual statute from the Lord of what they were to do. They were to keep the commandments. It's a mistaken idea for most Christians to think that Israel never kept the Lord or that nobody was able to keep the Lord. Keep the Lord. Of course they were. <clears throat> and then we move on down through the passage. Notice what it says in verse um, 3. The Lord made not this covenant with your fathers, but with us, even us who are all of us here alive this day. It's very interesting that the law of Moses was not given to Abraham or to Isaac or to Jacob or to Joseph wasn't given to that generations it was given to the generation in the time of Moses and then verse 6 he says I am the Lord thy God which brought thee out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage so it's very clear these ten commandments were not just for everybody in the world they were not they were for those that had been brought out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage and he says thou in other words you you that I brought out of Egypt will have no other gods before me okay have a look at verse 9 he says I the Lord thy God am a jealous God visiting the iniquity of the fathers unto the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me but take a look at verse 10 showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments you see these commandments were kept they were kept he shows mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments so who was it who said that nobody ever kept the law <laughs> they did keep the law um, take a look at verse 16 Honour thy father and thy mother, as thy Lord thy God hath commanded thee, that thy days may be prolonged, and that it may go well with thee in the land which the Lord thy God hath given thee. So, if you're a Jew, and you want to live a long life, then you keep the commandments of the Lord, and you honour your father and your mother. That word honour there doesn't just mean to have respect, it means to financially provide for their old age that's what that means and he says if you do that you'll have a long life <laughs> it's the commandment with promise and then we come right a bit down to the latter parts of the passage <clears throat> take a look at verse 29 oh that there were such a heart in them that they would fear me and keep all my commandments always and that it might be well with them and that and with their children forever this is the expression of the heart of God he says if only they would have a heart in them that they would fear me and keep all my commandments always this is what God wished for the children of Israel that they might keep all the commandments always and have a look finally at verse 32 he says you shall observe therefore so that you shall observe to do them therefore as the Lord your God hath commanded you and you shall not turn aside to the right hand or to the left you shall walk in all the ways which the Lord your God hath commanded you that you may live and that it might be well with you and that you may prolong your days in the land which ye shall possess so you can see can't you that the commandments of the Lord were not given to mock them the Lord didn't give them commandments that they were unable to keep the Lord gave them commandments that in the that they were able to keep and uh, not only were they able to keep them but when they did keep them the Lord blessed them and they lived long in the earth Wow somebody may be saying but surely they couldn't keep them perfectly ah well because when they couldn't keep them perfectly there were two things there if they committed a sin right in ignorance 
it was a mistake or they didn't realize then there was atonement sacrifices there were sacrifices for sin whereby their sin could be forgiven and their sin could be covered and they could be restored to their relationship to the Lord their God however if they sinned, if they sinned willfully if they sinned deliberately then they perished and the Lord brought about the fear of God upon the nation through his judgments upon those that sinned well god bless you this is a very important passage isn't it because this enables us to figure out in our head as christians where the children of israel were in their unique relationship with the lord their god now none of them had christian salvation none of them were saved in the sense that a christian saved they were however in this covenant relationship this beautiful relationship with the Lord their God in which they had all of the privileges and all the joys of fellowship with God and yet if they sinned they perished and they perished right quickly well God bless you it's great to talk to you and I look forward to catching up with you again tomorrow have a great day and bye for now